Ahoy there, mate, let's climb on board, come sail away with me. Then grab the rudder, a paddle or an oar, and, and sail away with me. We'll call for the skipper to steer his clipper or tanker or tub to sea. Then ship ahoy, you'll feel the joy of sailing away with me. Yo-ho, yo-ho, we'll sail the seven seas. Yo-ho, yo-ho, and feel the ocean breeze. Where the warm winds blow off Mexico to the Arctic where we'll freeze. Then ship ahoy, you'll feel the joy of sailing away with me. Yo-ho, yo-ho, we'll sail the seven seas. Yo-ho, yo-ho, and smell the salty breeze. Where the warm winds blow off Mexico to the Arctic where we'll freeze. Then ship ahoy, you'll feel the joy of sailing away with me. Hey! Spuds. What? Spuds. Please call me Spuds. My parents call me Spencer, but my friends call me Spuds. Spuds? Spuds? Why do they call you Spuds? I'll tell you later. Hey, look at all those boats. Wow, those boats are neat. Yep. I really appreciate you taking the time to show me around, Spuds. In Salido, Ohio, where I moved from, they don't have harbors like this. I've never seen so many different boats in one place. I wonder if that's a statue of somebody famous. Nah, he's nobody. Holy moly! Who are you? Ahoy, matey! Turn to and drop your anchors! Whoa! What did what he say? Oh, I said... Uh, Hi, guys. Who are you? Who are you? What are you? I'm Hard Hat Harry, the magical genie with the hard hat. And who are you? My name is Nicole. I'm 10 years old, and I just moved here from Toledo, Ohio. And this is my new friend and neighbor, Spencer. Spuds. Just call me Spuds. Spuds? How'd you get a name like Spuds? Don't ask. Are you really a genie? You bet your barnacles I am. And I was taking a much-deserved and well-needed vacation from my duties as a genie to learn all I can about boats. Really? What kind of boats? Oh, all kinds of boats. Let's see. There's little boats and big boats. Pleasure boats and work boats. Boats that become trucks and trucks that become boats. Boats that carry containers full of cargo and cargo ships called tankers. Boats that go under the water. And boats that glide on top of the water. Boats that help other boats. And boats that help people. Stop, stop. I had no idea there were so many different types of boats. Oh, but there are. Would you like to see some of them up close? Can we really? Can we? Do ducks swim? Avast me, mateys. We sail at first tide. Well, when will that be? Uh, in about 30 seconds. Oh, but first you have to be appropriately dressed. Oops, uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, wrong video. Oh. Like, oops, again? Valley girl, valley girl. Sorry, all right, uh, hang in there. Here we go again. Hey! What kind of a genie are you, anyway? Oh, a tired one. I'm sorry, but I was telling you I was taking a much-needed vacation. And sometimes when I get tired, my powers don't work exactly the way I want them to. Here we go again. Let's not. All right, far out. Why are you looking at us that way? Uh, something's missing. You never want to go on the water without these. No, not again, please! Ah, life jackets. Whether for work or for play, you never want to go out on the open water without some type of flotation device, like life jackets. In fact, for kids under 12 years of age, it's the law. 
How come you're not wearing one? Good question, Nicole. <laughs> but you forget. I'm a genie. Got it? Works for me. All right, now let's see. Where should we begin? How about at the beginning? Good idea, Spencer. Spuds, Spuds. Call me Spuds. Okay. Uh... Across the ocean, through our harbors, over the rivers we go, seeking boats of all shapes and sizes, from me to you to show. Toot, toot. Wow, where are we? We are on the tugboat, the Sea Cloud. And where we're standing is the front of the ship, or the bow. Now, the right side of the ship is called the starboard. The left side of the ship is called the port. And the back side of the ship, do you guys know what that's called? It's the stern, or you can say I'm going aft. OK, time for a quiz. Where are we standing? The bow? That's right. And the right side of the ship? Starboard. The starboard side. And the left side of the boat? Port side. That's right. And the back of the boat is called the stern, or the aft. Wow, you guys are the best. Now, tugboats are known as the workhorses of the waterway. What do tugboats do? What do tugboats do? Well, let's see. Uh, tugboats do on the water what tow trucks do on the land. They tow bigger ships in and out of harbors because these big ships can't maneuver in small places. And they do that by pulling them with these big, heavy ropes called halsers. Wow, these are heavy! Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On our inland rivers and waterways, instead of pulling boats, tugboats are used to push things called barges full of cargo. Barges have no motors, so tugboats have to have a lot of power. Is that why their shape's so funny? That's right, Spencer. Spud. Tugboats need very powerful engines and a special design because of the special work they do. They sit low in the water and have a high bow. The boat extends about 18 feet down into the water. You can't see it, but that's where they carry their big engines and a lot of fuel. You'll also notice along the side of tugboats are pads called rub rails. This protects them and the ship they push, pull, and nudge in and out of the harbor. Cool, huh? Double cool! Oh, that's a tanker. It's one of the biggest ships on the ocean. What do they do? Well, think of a tanker as a really, really, really big bottle of liquid. Because for the most part, that's what they do. They transport huge amounts of liquid like oil and gasoline. How much is huge amount? Well, a tanker like this one carries enough gasoline to fill a thousand swimming pools. Wow! Wow is right. And to give you an idea of how big big is, this tanker is as long as three football fields, and it has a storage area that can contain up to 18 two-story houses. And you know what? What? This isn't the biggest tanker on the sea. There are tankers even bigger than this one. Oops. <laughs> well, shiver me timbers. How do they build something that big? Good question, Nicole. Boats of all shapes and sizes are built in a place called a shipyard. Shipyards? What, what are shipyards? Well, I guess the best way to answer that is to show you. Here, watch this. Shipyards are not only used for building ships, they are also used to repair them. I know, that's a Navy ship, right? You're right. The Navy has some of the biggest shipyards in the world. What do those big cranes do? Those cranes are used to move big pieces of equipment on and off the ships while they are being built or repaired. What is that thing called? That's scaffolding, and it's built around the area needing repair to make it easier for the workers. Next to those ships, we're pretty little. Can you imagine trying to paint a ship without scaffolding or being a genie? What kind of ship is that? That's a refrigerated cargo ship. A what? 
Um, think of it as a really big floating refrigerator. Its job is to carry those products that need to stay cold in order to stay fresh. Such as? Such as? All good for you. Want to eat banana? Over a million bananas, to be exact. A million bananas? That ship can actually carry a million bananas at one time. A million whole bananas. A ship like this one has four areas inside it called holes where the bananas are stored. Each of these holds, or storage areas, are individually refrigerated, and that keeps the bananas fresh during shipping. But I've got lots more to show you. Follow me. Maybe you would feel more comfortable if you slipped out of your banana. <laughs> All right. Ah, there. That's normal. <laughs> All this flying around has made me hungry. Let's go down to the kitchen, or in ship talk, the galley. So Dave, we're pretty hungry being out on this tugboat all afternoon. What'd you fix us for dinner? Well, we're gonna have some London broil steak, baked potatoes, some stir-fried vegetables, and some carrot cake. Carrot cake? That's my favorite. Did you make it yourself? I sure did. It's not store-bought. It's my mom's recipe. Cookies. Cookies. Mm, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> mm. What, none for Hard Hat Harry? Oh, hard Hat Harry gosh. have a cookie. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. That's like, okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Now follow me. There's another very important seafaring term every sailor needs to know. The head. The head? Why do they call it the head? I know why I would call it the head. Why, spuds? Because that's what I would go to think. <laughs> You're not the only one. Actually, the term the head goes all the way back to the Royal British Navy hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Back then, the bathroom facilities were always located in the front or head of the ship. So instead of saying, I'm going to the bathroom, the sailors would say, I'm going to the head, meaning the head of the ship where the bathroom was located. And the view from the head is fabulous. One more question. How do they steer something this big? From part of the ship called the bridge. But rather than tell you, I'll show you. Let's go. Those silver handles are the throttles, and they control how fast the boat goes. And that little black handle is the rudder control, which determines which direction the boat heads. Once the ship comes in here and gets off the dock, it'll be slowing her down, and we'll come alongside and hang a line back here on this port quarter in order to get into the dock. The tugboat is going to push that big ship into the harbor with the help of those hawsers. Hey, what are they doing to that ship? Oh, that's a container ship. And those things that they're loading onto it are containers. It used to be that ships were loaded with individual pieces of freight of all shapes and sizes. Today, all those different shapes and sizes of freight are loaded into large containers, which in turn are then loaded onto ships like these. It's faster, safer, and more efficient. It's also kind of neat. You see, trucks carrying these containers pull up next to the ship, and a crane like this, called a hammerhead, lifts them from the truck and loads them onto the container ship. falling off. Well, have you guys ever played with Legos before? All the time. Ah, well the same way Legos interlock, the containers are designed to interlock. That way they can be stacked on top of each other on the ship and inside the ship. Pretty cool, huh? It may be cool, but it looks weird. Weird? If you think that's weird, take a look at these. What's that? 
That's called a roll roll. Roll in, roll out. It may look a little weird to us, but it serves a very special purpose. This ship was built specifically to transport automobiles from one country to another. Its odd shape allows it to carry a whole bunch of cars at a time. It's one of several ships whose cargo is driven on and driven off. Another example of a ship whose cargo is driven on and off is the ferry boat. Ferry boats not only carry passengers, but they carry their passengers' cars as well. It's the next best thing to a bridge. And then there's this. Look at all those hoses and things. There's a reason for all those hoses and things, as you call them. This is called an AOE, or a fast combat support ship. But it's probably easier to say what you're looking at is a floating gas station. When ships are at sea for long periods of time, they have to be able to get fresh supplies of fuel to keep them going. That's what this does. It brings fuel to ships who need it. How does it get the fuel to the ship? First, it comes alongside the ship, then it sends over these big hoses. The hoses are then connected to the ship's fuel tanks, and the tanks are filled. This ship holds millions of gallons of fuel. It can take up to eight hours to refuel a big ship such as an aircraft carrier. Nice landing! Oh, if you like that one, you'll love this one. Hold on to my horns. The Navy refers to aircraft carriers as flat tops, and I'm sure you can see why. The top of the ship looks like an airport runway because that's what it is. Aircraft carriers are literally floating airports where airplanes of all shapes and sizes take off and land. It's not uncommon for five to 6,000 people to live and work on board this ship for months at a time. A ship like this is literally a floating city at sea, a city with its own airport. Now watch carefully and tell me what this has in common with this. Both the driver of the boat and the pilot of the airplane are wearing crash helmets. Good eye! <laughs> but there is more. Both the airplane and the boat use a jet engine to make it go. Watch. That's weird. No, that's fast. This is weird. That's no bow, that's a tank. More precisely, it's an armored personnel carrier. It has a crew of two to three people and can transport about 13 more. But watch this. Far out. Isn't that amazing? It's now a boat. Watch out, here comes another one. Why does it sink? Good question, Spence. I, I mean, Spuds. But I'll explain why boats float later. First, I have something really exciting to show you. Hold on. What is that? This is called a hovercraft. What makes it unique, or as you would say, weird, is that it does not travel on the ground. And it does not travel on the water. What it does travel on is a cushion of air. The air is generated by giant fans underneath the craft. And because it literally floats over the water, it can also float over land. Now that's what I call really weird. Well, let's see. I've shown you boats that travel on the water, boats that travel over the water. Now it's time to show you boats that travel under the water. This is a nuclear-powered submarine. The term sub means under, and the word marine means ocean or sea. 
And that is exactly what this does. It goes under the sea. Do you want to know how they go underwater? Why would we? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You see, submarines are both watertight and airtight. That means water can't get in and air can't get out. Unless, of course, the captain wants it to. You see, big storage tanks are built into the side or hull of a submarine. When those tanks are filled with ocean water, the ship becomes heavier and sinks under the ocean. Once below the surface, the sleek design of the submarine allows it to glide smoothly and quietly through the water. That's why they call it the silent service. I think it would be fun to go on a submarine. Oh, I think so too. I'd love to travel under the water. Now, for the submarine to surface again, to go up, air is pumped into those storage tanks forcing the water out. With the water gone, the ship becomes lighter and floats to the surface. Thanks, Harry. That was great. Yeah, thanks. Those boats were cool. Hey, I know what kind of boat that is. That's a speedboat. I've seen those in the lake in Toledo. You're right, Nicole. They're also known as the race cars of the water. Designed to go fast, they have lightweight and powerful motors, which allow them to skim across the water at very high speeds. I'd like to have. Oh, that's a pleasure craft or a yacht. Although some people call it a money pit. What? Uh, boats like these come in all sizes and are used by their owners for pleasure, although they can be expensive to maintain. That's a sailboat. Right, but do you know why it's called a sailboat? Because that huge sheet that towers above the boat is called a sail. And when it catches the wind, it pushes the boat across the water. Um, well, let me show you. Here, hold your hands out. Cool, huh? Genie stuff. With our bandana, I'm going to show you how this sail works. Imagine this is a sail. Now watch what happens when you hold it up to the wind. It catches the wind. And since the sail is attached to the boat, it pushes the boat. See? Neat, huh? It works. Oh, look, guys. We are in the presence of royalty. What do you mean? Look. That's Her Majesty's ship, the Queen Mary. When she first sailed back in 1936, she was considered the biggest, the best, and the fastest cruise ship afloat. Back then, she was considered the Queen of the Sea. What's a cruise ship? Oh, well, the best way to explain a cruise ship, or a luxury liner as it's sometimes known, is as a really big floating hotel. Do you guys want to see one? Why would we? Watch this. Look at her. Isn't she a beauty? She's the SS Fantasy, one of the fun ships of Carnival Cruise Lines. Wow, this is a really big ship. It has to be. It's a combination floating hotel and vacation resort. Boy, that swimming pool looks like fun. It sure does, Nicole. Isn't it amazing? A swimming pool on a ship. But that's not all it has. Cruise ships like the Fantasy have all types of activities on board, like weight rooms and health spas. And like any good hotel, it has comfortable staterooms and great food. These rooms look comfortable. When I go on a cruise ship, I want to have a window in my room. I could get used to living like that. Everything you want and no school. 
Hey, how can that ship's all painted gray? Oh, that's a Navy ship. It's part of one of our fleet. That particular ship is called a cruiser. Is that the Navy's version of a cruise ship? <laughs> I don't think you'd find a sailor who would consider that a luxury liner. Our cruise ships patrol the oceans and promote freedom of the seas. The only thing I want to promote right now is lunch. Let's head back. Hold on. Where are we? Where are we? Where's our genie? Harry! Harry! Where, Where are, are you? Oops, again. <laughs> uh, a minor genie problem. Uh, hold on here, not to worry. Uh, 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 ah. See? Whoa, 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 cool. Cool nothing. This place smells like dead fish. Hmm, smells great, doesn't it? It's supposed to smell this way, Spuds. We are on a commercial fishing boat and its job is to travel our waterways and oceans, catching fish and nets like this one, like the one that caught me. If they have to go so far out to sea to catch their fish, what happens if there's an accident or their engine breaks down? How would they get back? Well, as you know, Nicole, my motto is safety first. And on boats like this, safety is very important. That's why they always carry safety equipment with them, such as life vests like the ones you're wearing. And this is a life raft and can hold between six and eight people. And that is an emergency beacon. Once it hits the water, the emergency beacon emits a signal which tells other ships where it's located so the people can be rescued. And most importantly, a working two-way radio. Do you know why? So they can call the Coast Guard? You're absolutely right. Congratulations. I see no ship in the harbor. Well, then you guys are going to really like seeing this. Coast Guard ships are called cutters. During wartime, the Coast Guard protects our nation's coastlines from potential enemies. But during peacetime, Coast Guard cutters like this one are available 24 hours a day to help ships in trouble. Like most naval ships, a Coast Guard cutter is like a small floating city. The ships have a complete kitchen, or as you know it now, the galley, where all the meals for the crew are cooked and served. And look at these living quarters where the crew sleeps when not on duty. Oh, ow, space is a little cramped. And remember, mateys, always 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 think safety whenever you're on the water and that includes in a swimming pool Ooh. oh well if you're looking for your mom she's over there look guys there's our marina well that's where we started and that's where we need to be hang on <sighs> Oh, thanks. Boy, you must be tired. Oh, I am. Well, that's that. Let's eat. But wait, you never explained how boats float on water. Oh, you're right. Well, let's see. First, we need some water. <laughs> to be more precise, we need a bucket full of water. <laughs> OK. Now we need a cup, a an empty cup. Oh, OK. Now, the first thing you guys need to know is everything has weight. This cup has weight. This container of water has weight. Oh, the boats on the ocean have weight. Even the water in the ocean itself has weight. Now, this cup weighs less than the water. Watch what happens. It floats. Now, let's see ah, what happens when we take this bobby pin. It weighs about the same as this cup, but watch. It sinks. 
That's because the weight of the cup is spread out over a bigger area and pushes away or displaces more water than the bobby pin. See? Neat, huh? That's cool. The bottom of the boat, or cup, is large enough to set the water aside and sit on top of it. Simply put, the weight of the boat has to be less than the weight of the water it pushes aside for the boat to float. Unless, of course, there's a leak. So, I'm hungry. Where do you guys want to eat? I don't care, just as long as they have potatoes. French fried potatoes, baked potatoes, mashed potatoes. I don't care, just as long as they have plenty of potatoes. I love potatoes. Potatoes, spuds, spuds, potatoes. Oh, that's why they call them spuds. Who loves potatoes? Well, let's go and eat. Ahoy there, mate, let's claim on board. Come sail away with me. Then grab the rudder up, paddle or an oar, and, and sail away with me. We'll call for the skipper to steer his clipper or tanker or tub to sea. Then ship ahoy, you'll feel the joy of sailing away with me. Yo ho, yo ho, we'll sail the seven seas. Yo ho, yo ho. The ocean breeze Where the warm winds blow off Mexico To the Arctic where we'll freeze Then ship ahoy You'll feel the joy of sailing away with me Yo-ho, yo-ho We'll sail the seven seas Yo-ho, yo-ho And smell the salty breeze Where the warm winds blow off Mexico To the Arctic where we'll freeze then ship ahoy, you'll feel the joy of sailing away with me. Hey! Ahoy there, mate, let's claim on board. Come sail away with me. Then grab the rudder up, paddle or an oar, and, and sail away with me. We'll call for the skipper to steer his clipper or tanker or tub to sea. Then ship ahoy, you'll feel the joy of sailing away with me. Yo ho, yo ho, we'll sail the seven seas. Yo ho, yo ho, and feel the ocean breeze. Where the warm winds blow off Mexico to the Arctic where we'll freeze. Then ship ahoy, you'll feel the joy of sailing away with me. Yo ho, yo ho, we'll sail the seven seas. Yo ho, yo ho, and smell the salty breeze. Where the warm winds blow off Mexico to the Arctic where we'll freeze. Then ship ahoy, you'll feel the joy of sailing away with me. Hey!